Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine brought to you by AACC and the Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council. View this and many more pearls as well as other free educational material at traineecouncil.org. Hi, my name is Dr. Dot Adcock. I am currently the Chief Medical Officer and a Senior Vice President of LabCorp Diagnostics. Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine on DOAX, Laboratory Methods for Assessing Dabigatran. This program was created with Bob Goslin from the Thrombosis and Hemostasis Center at the University of California, Davis Health System. This session is a joint effort between the American Association for Clinical Chemistry and the North American Specialized Coagulation Laboratory Association. I would like to review the definition of a number of terms that will be used in this and following presentations. Venous thromboembolism, or VTE, represent clots within the veins, most commonly deep vein thrombosis, DVT, and pulmonary embolism, PE. Pharmacokinetics is drug concentration after administration, pharmacodynamics, the drug effect after administration, peak levels, maximum drug concentration after administration, trough levels, the drug level just before the next dose, and then on therapy range is a commonly used term to address DOAX, as this class of drugs do not have therapeutic ranges. An on therapy range reflects the expected drug concentration from the lowest trough to the highest peak value for a given dose and indication. Dabigatran, which is administered as dabigatran etexalate, brand name Pradaxa, is an oral direct thrombin inhibitor, which is immediate acting with peak concentration one and a half to three hours after administration. It inhibits both free and bound thrombin, also known as activated factor two. Dabigatran is primarily excreted by the kidneys and has a half-life of about 13 hours. This table provides the expected mean peak and trough drug concentrations depending on the dose of dabigatran administered. Note that the 25th to 75th percentile ranges are quite broad, with overlap between the peak and trough ranges. This cartoon of the coagulation cascade demonstrates the various targets for anticoagulant agents and depicts the laboratory testing pathways and assay targets. The currency or dollar signs in the common pathway is a simple trick to remember those factors in this pathway and their order of reactions, 10, 5, 2, and 1. Factor 1 is also known as fibrinogen. Both direct 10A inhibitors and direct thrombin inhibitors can potentially cause prolongation of the PTT, PT, and RVVT, as these drugs inhibit factors within these pathways. As dabigatran is a direct thrombin inhibitor, the tests that may be affected by its presence include the PT, PTT, thrombin time, Ekrin methods, and other tests that utilize a thrombin substrate. These data are from a study we performed soon after dabigatran was FDA approved. Healthy volunteers were administered therapeutic doses and peak levels were obtained. Plasma samples were evaluated with seven different commonly used PTT reagents and six PT reagents. The red horizontal line depicts the upper limit of normal for most reagents and the vertical lines demonstrate the drug concentrations as measured by mass spectrometry. As you can see, response is reagent dependent with significantly more variability in PT reagents than PTT reagents. I also want to point out that time and seconds for the PTT reagents plateaus as drug concentration increases. Finally, it is important to note that both PT and PTT results can be normal when individuals have therapeutic concentrations of dabigatran in their blood. Normal PT and or PTT results, therefore, are not a reliable indicator of dabigatran presence. The thrombin time is a simple test by combining an undiluted or slightly diluted plasma sample with a low concentration of thrombin reagent 
and measuring the time to clot formation. As dabigatran is a direct inhibitor of thrombin, a standard thrombin time is exquisitely sensitive to the presence of dabigatran such that very low drug concentrations, far below on therapy range, cause prolongation of the thrombin time. With on-therapy concentrations of dabigatran, the thrombin clotting time is undetectable, that is, no clot detected, and therefore this assay cannot be used to quantify dabigatran concentration. The thrombin time is able to determine drug presence, although prolongation of the thrombin time is not specific for dabigatran. Thrombin time prolongation can also be secondary to heparin, parenteral direct thrombin inhibitors such as argatroban, and low or dysfunctional fibrinogen levels. To recap, dabigatran in a patient sample can be determined using the thrombin time, although remember that prolongation of the thrombin time is not specific for dabigatran. A normal PT and or APTT cannot exclude the presence of dabigatran. We will now review the laboratory methods to quantify dabigatran. The gold method to quantify dabigatran is liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry, LCMSMS. This is the only method to quantitate direct oral anticoagulant agents that is specific to the drug being measured. For example, if a patient is on dabigatran and heparin, this assay will measure only the dabigatran that is present. If the patient were on a different direct thrombin inhibitor, such as argatroban, the argatroban would not be measured in a dabigatran mass spectrometry assay. When using mass spectrometry, active metabolites or conjugates of the drug must be considered as these may contribute to overall anticoagulation but would not be measured in a dabigatran mass spectrometry assay. A conjugate of dabigatran, dabigatran glucuronide, adds about 20% anticoagulant activity, but an alkaline hydrolysis sample pretreatment splits the conjugate, allowing measurement of total dabigatran. This assay has an excellent lower limit of detection and measures drug over a broad range with good discrimination. While LCMSMS is the gold standard method to measure dabigatran, the lack of an international reference for assay calibration can lead to variability between testing locations. Accuracy and precision, however, within a single testing location is quite good. The dilute thrombin time can be used to quantitate dabigatran if the assay is calibrated using a dabigatran calibrator. Results compare well to a mass spectrometry method. Currently, there are no dabigatran calibrators that are FDA cleared for IVD use. All are for research use only. An adequate lower limit of detection can be achieved if the sample is properly diluted. Ecrin is a thrombin-like metalloprotease from the venom of Echis carinatus, a saw-scaled viper. Ecrin converts prothrombin to mesothrombin. Mesothrombin is a potent thrombin intermediate that can be inhibited by dabigatran or other direct thrombin inhibitors, such as bivalirudin, but not by heparin. The classic Ecrin method is a clot-based assay called the Ecrin clotting time. A chromogenic Ecrin assay is now available and it has advantages over the clot-based method in that the chromogenic assay is not affected by low prothrombin or low fibrinogen levels, both of which will falsely prolong the Ecrin clotting time. The chromogenic method demonstrates good accuracy and reproducibility. This slide depicts the Ecrin clotting time assay without, on the left, and with calibration on the right, using a dabigatran calibrator as compared to a mass spectrometry method. The assay demonstrates a linear response to drug over a broad therapeutic range. Both the Ecrin reagent and the dabigatran calibrator are labeled RUO, 
One disadvantage of this assay is the lot-to-lot -lot variability that can occur with the Ekron reagent. These are data from the Ekron chromogenic assay calibrated with a dabigatran calibrator performed in three different laboratories as compared to a mass spectrometry method. There is good agreement between testing locations with a linear response to drug over a broad drug concentration. This assay is labeled RUO as well. The chromogenic anti-2A method is exactly like the heparin anti-10A assay, except the reagent is thrombin and not activated factor 10. The kit is labeled RUO, research use only. The assay is easily automatable. A dual curve is needed to measure drug concentration adequately over the on-therapy range. The assay performance regarding precision and accuracy appears quite good, although there is limit, limited published data on the method. In summary, screening tests such as the PT and APTT are insufficient for assessing dabigatran anticoagulation and cannot be used to exclude the presence of drug. A normal thrombin time virtually excludes dabigatran presence. Mass spectrometry methods are considered the gold standard for measuring dabigatran, although there is no international reference for calibration. Alternative quantitative methods have been demonstrated to be equivalent to mass spectrometry, including the drug calibrated dilute thrombin time, ecrine clotting time, and ecrine chromogenic assays. More data is required for chromogenic anti-2A methods, but they appear adequate. Alternative methods for quantifying dabigatran can be adapted to open systems that are programmable, automated coagulation analyzers. However, there are no FDA-approved methods. Thank you for your attention. For more like this, as well as articles, podcasts, and more, please visit the Trainee Council at traineecouncil.org.